Life Force by Tony Robbins, Peter Diamandis, and Robert Hariri. Something that's really staggering to me about this book that slapped me in the face on first impression is its sheer length. It's 720 pages long. The audio version is 23 hours long. I know, Sam. Just suck it up and review the book, okay? But let me tell you guys, the long book fear is, is real. Uh, I have a video coming out soon about 10 different books we haven't reviewed on this channel and why, and a lot of them, it really just came down to length. And this isn't Tony Robbins' first uh, rodeo with a work of length. Tony Robbins put something out in 2014 called Money Master the Game. The audio version was like 21 hours long, and it reminded me eerily of his other book, Unshakable, which was like a third of the length. He must have a lot to say on the topic of vitality and longevity. If you've seen his seminars or even clips of them, chances are you've heard him mention the subject. But now he brings aboard Peter Diamandis, a man known for his work in longevity and space travel, and Robert Hariri, a surgeon, a biomedical scientist, and serial entrepreneur in biomedicine and aerospace. Oh my god. Gosh! What can we expect from this book? What can we learn from it? Are there well-backed up wild claims all over it? And is Tony Robbins really going insane? Um, let's talk about it. Some may argue that he fell off the rocker about like 70 years ago, but most people don't know that he's not much older than 60. Just so you guys know, there are affiliate links in the description, and if you guys buy anything through those links, then I get commission, which helps me build this channel and keep making these videos. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam, and I want to make self-growth normal, because people shouldn't have to look this information up. They seriously shouldn't. It should just be mainstream knowledge. If you agree, then please make sure to smash that like button. This is probably going to be like the longest book review that I've done in over a year and a half at least. And it's probably gonna take me like three hours to edit. <laughs> like, don't expect this until like August. But here's what Tony Robbins said in the preface that we can expect. How to immediately tap into the power of your body by accessing a chemical that drives energy at a cellular level. Four virality ingredients that a world-renowned Harvard professor has used to reverse his biological age by 20 years. How to increase strength and muscle muscle mass, boost metabolism, and increase bone density by up to 14% with a 10 minute workout once a week. One of the simplest things you can do to increase your daily focus, boost your mood, and increase your vitality without caffeine or other stimulants. Prime your body for peak performance by using the latest wearable devices for 24 seven personalized sleep and recovery data. How to tackle healing and regeneration without surgery. How stem cells have helped people regain the use of their arms and legs after strokes, a novel gene therapy that's been shown to restore sight with just two injections, a new injection that is saving hundreds of lives by helping people with PTSD, and way, way, way more, including treatments of everything from hair loss to symptoms of cancer and Alzheimer's. Isn't that insane? Now, it may sound like maybe up to this point I've been kind of joking around about Tony Robbins, but I admire him a ton. Something I really love about him is is how after all this time, he's found ways to use his network and connections to gather and report and distribute these incredible insights. Now, I know I said this is a long book. It's probably gonna be a long review. I wasn't able to cover as much of it as I wanted, but um, if I were able to, this would probably not be one review. It would probably be 739. There are 25 chapters and we're gonna go over each one of them, my thoughts on them, things that surprised me, things I learned. We're gonna go over standout quotes, who I recommend this book to, and what books to maybe check out next. Chapter one is Life Force, Our Greatest Gift. This went over, again, some of those things that you were, we were saying we can expect from the book. Then Tony Robbins went into more of his background and his story. Robbins became a full-time biohacker after learning how stupendous it is, the extents of the tools of the human body. All of these things are free. Like, your body was free. You didn't have to pay to have a human body. And after that, he started going around the world for hours and hours and hours at a time on stage in front of thousands or even 10, 35 maybe thousands of people almost every single day. After doing that, he realized that he had to pay attention to his vitality because you can't do that for that long without paying attention to what's going on inside. You also learn about how much of what today's doctors know about what they do is becoming outdated daily. In 2017, Harvard Medical School reported that basically half of everything doctors learn in medical schools is invalid within at least 18 to 24 months. This is only like half the statistic if I remember correctly. But at the same time, he is 
very well able to praise how incredible the work is that a doctor does. Because doctors do some of the hardest work ever. <laughs> chapter two is the power of stem cells. The next few chapters explain the multitude of ways you can create greater energy in your body and heal more rapidly, why we age, and why scientists think that we may not need to. You dive into the raw material of life, human stem cells, a foundational therapy for rejuvenation, and then a peek at the latest preventative and personalized diagnostic tools that can literally save your life. You hear the story of what convinced uh, Robert Herrera to leave Cornell and found LifeBank USA, which used patented technology to harvest, test, and preserve cord blood and placental stem cells in nitrogen-cooled freezers. Hard work, guys, <laughs> really. But the way that Tony Robbins talked about it, it really sounds like the power of stem cells is truly limitless because as long as something in your body is broke, the odds are better than decent that a scientist somewhere out there believes that stem cells can fix it no matter what it is. You also learn about some of the objections that people have against stem cell research being the dark side and malpractices that go on behind closed doors. Chapter three is diagnostic power, breakthroughs that can save your life. Here's one part that gave me goosebumps in this chapter after a few statistics on the increase of Alzheimer's patients at one time from 2000 to 2019. Heart disease and strokes are scary. Cancer is scary, but Alzheimer's? That may be just about the scariest of all end of life diseases because it steals our connections, our memories with loved ones, and our independence, taking a huge toll on those we love. Anyone who has loved someone with Alzheimer's or dementia knows how brutal and dehumanizing the end can be. The authors explain the importance of the CCTA test for heart disease, the MRI test for cancer, and a blood test for metal and hormones, and somehow Robbins is able to explain that they're able to be done in just all of all of them in just a couple hours. Chapter four is turn back time. Will age soon be curable? I really admire what he was saying about the differences between chronological age and biological age. Isn't that cool? This reminded me of, um, for high school, I went to, you know, half high school during half the day and then the other half of the day it was a technical school. And at that technical school, the instructor who I had was probably the best teacher I, I literally ever had. This man was in his 50s. Uh, we called him coach. He was a soccer coach and he always ate fruits and vegetables and he had more energy than any of the students, even me. <laughs> but the question isn't in dispute of how genetically determined our lifespans are. David Sinclair, professor of genetics and co-director of the Paul F. Glenn Center for Biology and Aging Research at Harvard, said that if you look at twin studies of thousands of people, your lifespan is only 20% genetic. Isn't that insane? 20% genetic? The rest is epigenetic. And in this chapter, that's what you'll learn about, the epigenome. Chapter five is the miracle of organ regeneration. Like they cover everything. This next section uncovers some of the unconventional strategies that are being used in the process of changing medicine as we know it. Some of this stuff is truly insane. It's almost unbelievable. And I hope that you guys can count this as maybe one of the 99 times that I say this. My favorite part of this chapter was Robin's telling the story of, um, of Martin Rothbard. Blatt. Oh my gosh. She's an entrepreneur, founder, uh, co-founder of SiriusXM, author, lawyer, and helicopter pilot with what he said was the brain of an engineer and the soul of a philosopher. After living the first half of her life as a male, Martine became the highest paid female CEO in America, and then the first openly transgender CEO of a public company. Isn't that badass? Obviously, they also talk about the breakthroughs in organ transplantation too, but this one was just, it was breathtaking. The part about her daughter Genesis was truly inspiring. Anyone who says that think and grow rich is outdated information, well, think again, because if that book were written in this century, this would definitely be somewhere in there. Chapter six is the mighty CAR T cell, a breakthrough cure for leukemia. Leukemia really does sound horrific. Like first you're attacked by the disease and then you're attacked by the side effects of the treatment. But some of these stories almost sound like miracles. I mean, the next chapter is called incisionless brain surgery. Like what? This chapter shared how more than 5,000 Parkinson's and essential tremor patients have found significant relief with high intensity focused ultrasound therapy. Many 
many of the practices in this book, by the way, are FDA approved. Not all of them, not, not yet. Uh, they're FDA approved though. They're already in use by doctors. Of course, they're spreading in popularity, which is amazing because over time, presumably, they'll become more affordable to people who don't have the privilege of, of quality healthcare per se. In the US, for example, focused ultrasound is now covered by Medicare nationwide, along with Aetna and Blue Cross Blue Shield plans in more than 30 states. But given its proven efficacy and bang for buck, other private insurers are expected to follow. Chapter eight is gene therapy and CRISPR, the cure for disease. The gene therapy revolution is expected to encompass all sorts of disease, but for now the main target is rare diseases. 7,000 rare diseases affect up to 40 million Americans. Keep in mind, there are about 330 million of us. So that's like here, 40 divided by 330. That's 12% of Americans. So just take a second to think of this. While everybody on YouTube is understandably freaking out about cryptocurrency and the metaverse, biotech is exploding and the masses aren't batting an eye. And I don't get that, but they recommend reaching out to special interest groups if you are one of those Americans. Guys, I'm like really impressed with this book. Part of the reason for that is that like 23 hours, you might expect quite a bit of fluff but somehow they were able to, to rip the fluff right out of this one. Chapter nine is the wondrous Wint pathway, the ultimate fountain of youth? Question mark? This one covered a lot. My favorite part was about the company Biosplice who are finding a way to leverage the body's natural powers to renew itself. If their trials prove out, which is not guaranteed, the top therapy against some of the toughest cancers will not be chemo or radiation. It'll be a once a day pill with minimal side effects. But again, it's just, it's super inspiring how Tony Robbins will put together a sort of like background or summer very quickly, quickly, it's a 23 hour long book, summarized biography of these trailblazers in unconventional, just futuristic medicine. Chapter 10, your ultimate vitality pharmacy. This section shares an array of pragmatic tools to expand your physical and emotional energy. And this chapter talks about a wide array of available supplements with strong safety profiles, ranging from natural genes, which is like peptides, to an intensive FDA approved pill that some scientists say may help protect against cancer and heart disease. Chapter 11, living pain-free. And he also had this beautiful introduction to the pain-free chapter talking about what pain means to us and how bad the opiate epidemic has become in ways that maybe a lot of people who understand it are, are still kind of overlooking. And then he went into pain management and how to lessen pain. Did you know that virtual reality could be a form of pain relief? So we're talking about like alternatives to surgery, harmful medications, and anesthetics. Chapter 12 is the longevity lifestyle and diet. This chapter of course talked about eating healthy, exercising regularly, and fasting intermittently. But these are time-tested guidelines. They're not rules. Whatever you do, it's done in your way, with your quantities, at your times, if that makes sense. I really wasn't surprised to find out that water is the most essential nutrient of all. But by the time I finished this chapter, I have to admit, I did have to pee. Chapter 13 is the power of sleep, the third pillar of health. I knew that he was going to discuss the findings of neuroscience and psychology professor Matthew Walker because of his book, Why We Sleep. That is the most popular book about sleep. Period. That is the most popular book about sleep in the history of sleep. And the history of sleep probably goes back further than the history of sheep. That book alone scared me into sleeping eight hours a night and out of sleeping six hours a night. But the way that they laid out in this book, um, how to get a good night's sleep in general, it, it was just, for lack of a better word, it was pristine. Chapter 14, strength, fitness, and performance. Your quick guide to maximum results. I'm not gonna lie, this, this chapter in particular sounded like a huge series of infomercials for different biological clock age reversals. One that really stood out was, um, was something called Osteo Strong, a machine that for 10 minutes a week, once a week, is proven to increase your bone density, muscular strength, balance, and overall health. I saw the video on it and it seems almost fake. Like you, you push 
multiple times your own body weight and, and it looks it, it looked effortless it really did it barely looked like they were pushing at all but like how do you argue with the science it's one of those things that you just have to try and you look it up and the reviews are like i've been doing this for like seven years and i feel younger than i did before i started what like how do you argue with the science of that i don't know chapter 15 is beauty enhancing your visible health and vitality this is a chapter that i think people might enjoy who are insecure about their appearance but like, let me tell you guys, this is nothing whatsoever like stereotypical motivational book material. This chapter particularly, there's no positive affirmation crap or hard love or easy listening comedy like haha I feel good about myself because I'm laughing at this or anything like that at all. None. It's warm, it's extremely insightful, and full of practicality, realism, and resourcefulness. It's seriously refreshing. Like, I swear, this chapter was like a whole gallon of Fuji water. Is that what it's called? Fuji water. Fiji. How did I mess that up? Well, it's 11.48 p.m. That's probably why I gotta get to sleep soon. Chapter 16 is Women's Health, The Cycle of Life. This chapter was narrated by Cassandra Campbell, narrator of the audio version of one of the most popular novels in the last several, several, several years. It sold 10 million copies in like two years. It's called Where the Crawdads Sing. Maybe you've heard of it. I don't understand why she narrated this and only this, um, because they didn't specify it, I don't think, but she did a remarkable job. And of course you learn about like generally why women live longer than men and, and stuff like that. Chapter seven is called How to Mend a Broken Heart. This next section tackles the biggest health threats, bringing the best tools of prevention and alternative treatments. You know that saying, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Robbins says that you may not choose to read everything in this section, but he says to feel free to check the ones out that pertain to those most important to you or someone close to you. And they talk about how regenerative medicine can even heal animal hearts, specifically dogs. Soon we'll be able to tap into the power of stem cells, gene therapy, and the literal building of hearts, ghost hearts, to ensure a future that shines brighter than we ever thought possible. Take care of yourself, my dear friend, and celebrate a long, healthy, vital, strong life filled with life force driven by this beautiful, magnificent gift from our creator, the heart. Isn't that like just <laughs> like <laughs> chapter 18 your brain treating strokes this one goes through five different breakthroughs in stroke treatment and it's seriously unbelievable the one about the glove that can teach immobile hands to move again after a stroke that's like immobilizing like what it's like that one that one meme with that with that guy who's like who I don't know what sound he's making. I found it fascinating also how many of these different areas of health revolved in improvement around gamification through virtual reality, let alone how many of them are FDA approved. But by the time I got to this point in Life Force, I was still really surprised by all of these things. Chapter 19 is how to win the war on cancer. Oh, my dad, my dad doesn't have cancer, but he liked this chapter. The best takeaway from this chapter for me was the importance of figuring out what's wrong before it has the chance to form itself. It reminds me of that video of the uh, the theoretical physicist, Professor Michio Kaku. He had this video a while ago about what the world will be like in 2030. And he mentioned that like you could poop and when you're done, you stand up and the toilet says to you, you have X amount of brain cancer cells growing in your hypothalamus. And if you eat less ice cream and more bananas or something, then you can save yourself from that. Doctors Bob Hariri works with are trying to work this very early preventative care into mainstream medicine and healthcare. Because you could spend $2.7 million on the treatment of your spouse's colorectal cancer. Did I pronounce that right? And it might not even work. But if maybe decades earlier you spend a total of $10,000 on a series of tests to make sure that the cancer never happens, it might be worth it. But again, the stuff that they talk about in this chapter is like, it's 10,000 times deeper than everything I just mentioned. Like that is not even touching the surface. Chapter 20, conquering inflammation and autoimmune disease, bringing peace to the body. Some of the stuff they even talked about the, uh, I'm not. Like, my problem though with having three people write a nonfiction book is like, who's saying what? Like, how does that process work? <laughs> 
Chapter 21 is diabetes and obesity, defeating a double threat. They call this the diabetes epidemic. What's more, an escalating global epidemic of overweight and obesity is what they call globesity. Here's a part of this chapter that stood out. He weighed 380 pounds and felt ashamed of his weight. He was terrified of walking into a doctor's office and finding that he couldn't fit into any of the chairs. He was sick of listening to the doctor's same old lecture every visit about eating healthier foods. It's not like he wasn't trying. He felt that he was in a downward spiral with no way out. He'd been fired from his job, his marriage fell apart, and now his two daughters were left living with his mother. At age 43, he was alone, unemployed, and depressed. Chapter 22, Alzheimer's disease, eradicating the beast. The thing is, like similar books about taking control of your of your mind and taking better care of yourself with your health, at least that I've checked out like the obesity code and the ultramind solution, they don't have this sort of like personal anecdotal storytelling touch to them. They really don't. And that's something that makes stuff like this so effective. Chapter 23 is longevity and the power of exponential technologies. This was a beautifully written and narrated chapter directly by Peter Diamandis about the history of lifespan extension, Moore's Law, and way more about companies in biotech who are working to change the landscape of medicine. Chapter 24 is creating an extraordinary quality of life, the power of mindset, and 25, the power of decision, the gift of living in a beautiful state. These were both narrated by Tony Robbins and they were incredible. They were probably my two favorite chapters, but Who's to say that the other ones aren't that great? You know what I'm saying? I really have to go to bed. <laughs> the last few chapters focus on the power of placebo and choices you can make to change the quality of your life today. These two are the most important because we can do whatever we want with our bodies, but if we don't manage our minds and emotions, then we'll never experience the quality of life that we truly desire and deserve. Life force, guys, I have to admit, it is ridiculously and almost maybe unnecessarily long. Like, I could be wrong, but I genuinely do not think most of the people, and I, I feel like Tony Robbins feels the same way based on what he said at certain points in the book, I genuinely don't think most people who buy this book will read or listen to the whole thing. I'm saying it out loud, okay? So you can't say that I didn't say it out loud. It would have been cool if they like divided in, into sections and did more research on each topic to accommodate individual books on each topic? I don't know. Otherwise, it comes off as this sort of odyssey. Nonetheless, I love, love, love how up-to-date it is. I mean, it really takes the effort just to stay ahead of itself. Talking about the future and what's coming soon, as well as how quickly everything is accelerating, just so you have an idea of what to expect. And at the same time, it's not vague. Like, the companies, the people, and the breakthroughs the authors talk about are incredibly specific and not that well-known. And it goes much much, 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 much deeper than we did in this review. A metric crapload of organized, highly organized, incredibly up-to-date, and unmistakably well-researched information on the cutting edge and today and tomorrow of biotech, longevity, and vitality wrapped in heartfelt stories and high energy level accessibility. For the most part, life force is what I expected it to be. And that's not a bad thing. That's definitely not a bad thing. Quotes. Make yourself the CEO of your own health. I want more than a long lifespan. I want a long health span as well. When people are over-promising and under-delivering, the last thing they want to tell you is how they're actually performing. It's extremely rare to find someone so consistently inspirational across such a wide slot of human endeavor. But when I do, I want to figure out what makes them tick. The person who makes no mistakes is making the biggest mistake because they're just standing still and doing nothing. If it's a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. The older you get, the better you get. Uh, unless you're a banana. It wasn't the experience that changed my life, it was how I processed it. Direction one. I recommend this book who, for anyone who really wants to make more out of their life's quality. It's like, by quality, really think about what I mean by quality. Direction two, if you like this book, you might like Keep Sharp by Sanjay Gupta, who's actually mentioned multiple times in Life Force, Why We Sleep, of course, by Matthew Walker, and Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins, just because that's like, the personal finance version, sort of, of Life Force. Also, this is not a pressure ploy or anything like that, but for anyone considering buying Life Force, the authors said that they're in the position in their lives to give. Literally 100% of the profits that they make from this book are going directly to Feeding America. Feeding America, to my knowledge, they're like partnered or something with the Tony Robbins companies, and the Tony Robbins companies have a goal to provide one 
billion meals through Feeding America by 2025. They're already 850 million meals in. So, you know, if you guys buy this book, then it'll help with that. Life Force by Tony Robbins, Peter Diamandis, and Robert Herrera. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video, if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, especially this one. But if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.